What's up, wrestling fans? Welcome to another episode of the Smart Out Moment Smack Talk Podcast. I'm your host, as always, Tony Mango, and joining me on this panel, we've got Stephen Wago. Yo. Mike Payton. Yo. Callum Wiggins. Yo, yo, yo. Asshole, don't hog the yo's. One yo per person. <laughs> yeah, JTG. Where's he now? Who knows? Think he, think he, like most people in the wrestling business, he has a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, he wrote a book. That's all I know. He wrote a book? Yeah, he wrote a book. I probably he covered it on the hot actually. tags. <laughs> oh, he wrote two books? He wrote two books. Are they like wrestling books or are they like Dr. Seuss oh, yeah, or something? They're, 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 like, they're like those backstage stories. Like he tells a bunch of shitty stories about John Cena and shit. And I'm like, uh, getting everything. I think he's first he's called Damn, Damn Why Did I? I think his first one's uh, called uh, Damn, Why Did I Write This Book? <laughs> this is the second one called Damn, How Did I Write That Last Book? <laughs> Should have been Damn, Why Did I Pick Up My Phone? <laughs> <laughs> uh, R.I.P. the uh, JTG release watch counter thing that I had going on. That was great. Uh, well, if you don't know by the title of this, the thumbnail, or anything else that you're checking out, this is another episode of Play the Game, uh, which is essentially just a roundup of a couple sub segments and if you didn't watch the last one don't worry i'll give you a breakdown of uh how these things kind of work especially because we've got some people on here that uh weren't necessarily a part of the last one so i'm gonna add a fourth new game this time around and uh that's the one that we're gonna start off with it's uh superstar or porn star where i'm gonna give you guys a name and i want you guys to guess whether it's a superstar or a porn star it's popped up somewhat recently because I had come across somebody on some indie show and I was just kind of like, that really sounds like a porn name. It got me thinking about it, whatever. So I wrote down a list of a bunch of uh, porn stars, a bunch of superstars from the indie field and elsewhere. And uh, I'm going to just see what your guesses are and stuff. So let's start off with Courtney Rush. Uh, Porn star? Wrestler. Uh, wrestler, that's Rosemary and Tina. That is a wrestler. Holly Letkeman, or whatever is her real name. Sounds like a porn that star sounds name. sounds like a porn star, too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give another one, just to kind of set the field a little bit. Abigail Mack. Porn star. Porn star. Yeah, porn star. All right, that was a porn star. <laughs> <laughs> what about Electra Blue? Porn star. Mm. Wrestler. Wrestler. Sounds like she could be a Lucha Libre girl. Though. That's mm. a porn star. Oh, cool. <laughs> it's really, like, once you start diving into some of these, some of them become really difficult, because then you get a name... <laughs> Like, Sister Ophelia. Oh, that's definitely a wrestler. Well, that has to be a porn star, surely. That's such an innuendo. I'm going to go with porn star. That's a wrestler? <laughs> yeah, do it. <laughs> Only wrestler would go with something that lame. Sister <laughs> Ophelia. True. It's S-I-S-T-A O apostrophe F-E-E-L-Y-A. See, it's the sister. If it was yeah. sister, I would say maybe a porn star. Uh, but yeah. Yeah. wrestling would be insensitive enough to do the sister. <laughs> Let's try yeah, the po- Solo Darling. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I- I'm going to go with that one. I'm going yeah, go to with- go with Wrestler. That's a wrestler. Mm. Sounded fucking lame enough to be some shitty masked indie wrestler. <laughs> How about Oh, let's see. Let me... No, that one's going to be a little bit easy. Uh... There's Porn Star there. How about this one? Just to see. Uh, let's put people on notice. Jasmine St. Clair. That's a Porn that's, Star, isn't it? That's a Porn Star. That's, that's a trick question. Yeah. That is a trick question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she was in uh, ECW and many, many porn videos. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's that, why... in that case, I got one. Page. 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 
<laughs> well, is she really a star? <laughs> <laughs> I think those videos got lots of views. Well, in that case, Xavier Woods. <laughs> <laughs> Go back to Jasmine Sinclair, which one do you think she's more ashamed of doing? The porn, because uh, when we did the hottest uh, and sexiest superstars from the TNA and all of wrestling thing that I had done before, she got real annoyed with me about uh, one of the pictures that I had put up, because I was just sort of like, well, I can't find many pictures that aren't you covered in jizz. So, like, <laughs> <laughs> it's sort of kind of hard, you know, whatever, and... But she called me out on it. And... <laughs> well, it's like when you do a search on like Google Images and stuff, like I've got the safe search off. So you do a search for like, um, I don't know, like an AJ Lee and she's going to come up with like the superstar stuff. Like she didn't do anything other than that. And you do a search for Mickey James and you might come across her old like nude spread or like uh, Candace Michelle. You might come across like her Playboy stuff or like that. You type in Jasmine St. Clair, you see a, a gangbang picture where there's like eight dicks and stuff. And it was just like, well, I only have a couple options here. Things that you're not like in some kind of, you know, bent over position or something like that. And she ended up sending me a couple other pictures that was like, use these instead. And then a whole bunch of her fans got like, you know, really, really wanted her to win the tournament and stuff. It was like, Kind of like, uh oh, what's going on here? Should have used the ones that she gave you and shot just into it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would have been great. Um, I'm gonna throw out another name out here, Marsha May. Wrestler. 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 Only saying that because I wouldn't want to fuck someone called Marsha. Porn star. Ugh. Uh. No, that was too easy. I was going to say Megan Cox. (laughs) (laughs) I wrote down a big list. I just kind of went down on like, uh, it was a Pornhub or something like that. I wrote down like a whole bunch of things. So then I went on like this indie wrestler website, (laughs) wrote down a whole bunch of names. Uh, Montana Sky. Porn star. Porn star. Yeah. Yeah. Porn star. That's porn star. They usually go with some sort of location in their names. Oh, not necessarily. A bit, I'm, I'm not saying like it's like widespread, but I think it's quite typical. I'll just think Montana. I think yeah. Montana Sky. I know there's a Dakota Sky too. What not about Dakota I Kai? <laughs> um, hmm. Renee Star. Porn star. I'll say it's a wrestler. I think it's a wrestler. Porn star. It's porn star, or superstar, or Renee star. That's the new game. <laughs> <laughs> what about Brittany Blake? That's wrestler. wrestler. Yeah, yeah, wrestler. Not only is she a wrestler, she's a former member of Fanboys Anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> porn star. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, there has been members of Fanboys now instead of been diving into that kind of a thing. <laughs> so we're going to come back to porn star or superstar in the future uh, if I get some, you know, catch a wind of one of those things. Okay, you know, we bounce around on the play the game. We don't do like one at a time kind of a thing. But let's switch over to another game here and a uh, little breakdown of it. Blind tag. Uh, what you do is I'm going to give you some either phrase or a name or something like that. And I want you to give me the immediate word association that you think of when I say that. So we can go one of two ways. We tried this out both ways and it seemed like there were some positives and negatives. You could either call on somebody in particular and you guys could do the same too. If you think of something and you want to like, you know, say like Peyton, you have to think of like uh, Dolph Ziggler. What's the first thing you think of? Like that kind of a thing. Or we can make it everybody all spits out at the same time. What do you guys think? What are you more up for? Duh. Duh. <laughs> All right, we're going to call on people. <laughs> okay, so Callum, I'm going to start with you. Yay. Best manager? Bobby Heenan. Always go for Heenan. It's a. Uh, I just um, think that he had the most uh, character out of the managers that are wrestling throughout WWE and I remember actually 
like his association with them more than I remember the actual wrestlers themselves. Like people like uh, like Haku or something like that when he was in WWE. Like just think he was in the Heenan family more than anything else he did in WWE. Hmm. Wago, your word first word that you think of when you hear this name, blurt it out. Ready? No. Sure. Go. John Morrison. Douchebag. <laughs> <laughs> I have the feeling you were going to say that, whoever was said at the... <laughs> no, not really. I do think but John Morrison just kind of looks like a douchebag. None of his moves look like they hurt. Kind of glad he got cut. All right, Peyton, first thing that pops up in your mind when you hear this question. Best foreign object? Uh, Rice. <laughs> didn't see that one coming I was thinking probably steel chair or something like that rice <laughs> Mr. Fuji on the mind yeah <laughs> alright uh, Callum let's go word association Bam Bam Bigelow fat <laughs> poor Bam Bam I feel terrible because like the first word I thought was fat and the second word I thought was dead. So it's kind of... <laughs> <laughs> I very liked Tyson Smith. I didn't really watch too much of his career, so I couldn't really think of much else. All right, Wago, going to do a reverse word association here. I'm going to say a word and you're going to have to say the first wrestler that pops up into your mind. Okay. Silly. It came in my mind. Kiss Kurt Angle, because he's looking at me at Barbara Payne's picture. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, nothing gets in my head, and then I looked at uh, my screen, and Kurt's just sitting there, uh, like, standing there in a shield outfit, smiling like a fucking goofball. Hmm. That was pretty silly. <laughs> <laughs> Something should only exist in memes. No, that that needed to happen. I mean, if you can't have Roman Reigns, you you want Kurt Angle to be doing that, right? <laughs> That's like the next best <laughs> option. Yeah, nothing like a giant shield power bomb from a smaller guy. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Trying to think of another variation out of this. Uh... Hmm. All right, Peyton. Uh-huh. Best announcer. Tits. Announcer? Do you mean like uh, at the table or like in like ring announcer? In, in ring announcer? Huh? Ring announcer. Ring announcer? No, it's the fucking Fink. I was kind of hoping that I would maybe get some kind of weird switch up and not Fink. <laughs> We'd be no. like, oh, Greg Hamilton. Oh, why, shit! Why did I say Greg <laughs> Hamilton? Like, is there kind of even thing. any other option? Rice. <laughs> Good man, Rice. <laughs> Honestly, Rice is probably better than half the ones we have now. Yeah, there's not uh, been a really, really... I mean, I like Mike Rome, and uh, yeah, Justin Mike Roberts Rice. was good, but they're no comparison to the Fink. Is Lillian even around anymore? No, uh, she's she popped up, I think, last was, like, a, the last year's tribute to the troops or something like that. I think Mr. Anderson would be offended if they hired him for that. <laughs> I would be totally cool with that. I mean... He's a good announcer. Yeah, like, that was his strength, you know? It certainly wasn't his wrestling. Why not, right? I mean, it's what he's doing now. He he's knows still the no business. Thing. He's still no thing, but... I mean, it, I think that he's better suited for, like, boxing and stuff, but... Hey, eventually, you're gonna have to stop doing the in-ring action stuff, and that's something that you can do for a hell of a long time. Could be a potential future. They fired back people for worse things in the past, you know? I don't think Randy Orton still holds that much of a grudge. You know? And to be honest, probably everyone backstage has wanted to drop Orton on his neck at least once. Probably including Orton. <laughs> He's probably looking in the mirror and just kind of like, you're an asshole. <laughs> oh no, after that time that he punched the ground and fucked his shoulder up, he probably wanted to beat the shit out of himself. <laughs> Goddamn Orton! Stupid, stupid. 
Uh, let's pan over to Smark's choice. If you, uh, again, if you were familiar, uh, weren't familiar from the last time around, it's basically Sophie's choice. Uh, in that movie, she has to pick between her kids. In this, you have to pick between two wrestlers. One of them gets erased from history, and the other one doesn't, essentially. <laughs> So sometimes it's a little bit easier, sometimes it's a little bit harder. And I wrote down a bunch of these lists before, so I'm going to kind of piggyback off the same one that I had done uh, the last time or so. And I'm going to start off with a hard one. So anybody has uh, their opinions about it, weigh in. It's not going to be like calling anybody or whatever like that. But you got to pick. One person gets erased from history. Kurt Angle or Brock Lesnar? Kurt Angle. Gets erased? Yep. I'm just a huge Brock Mark, to be quite honest. That dude is such a freak of nature and has been able to just transcend sports. It'd be such a shame not to have that. And I know Kurt's got like a whole bunch of great matches, but those few years we had with Brock, I enjoyed more than Kurt Angle's career. There's one thing you don't take into account, Steven, and that's that Brock never won the gold for America. Yeah, I did enjoy how that guy was super pissed off that he thought he won. Have you ever watched that? Yeah. It's really fucking funny. <laughs> what happened? So Kurt Angle, uh, so it's gone to the points. So they're waiting for the decision. And I think the guy's from uh, Iran, Iraq. Iran, Iraq, what's the difference? Um, and the key, he keeps raising his own arm with the referee. And then the ref raises Kurt Angle's arm, and he basically pitches this fit publicly <laughs> to the uh, <laughs> judges, and it's fucking hilarious. Uh, well, if I'm, if I'm going to erase one of the two, I've got to erase Brock, Brock Lesnar. Boo. In the same way that Steven's a big Brock Lesnar mark, I'm a huge Kurt Angle mark. So, but he's my favorite wrestler of all time. So I'm not gonna erase him over. I I do think that Lesnar's uh, especially his first three years in WWE was some of like just really entertaining stuff. And I've developed more of an appreciation of him now than I did when he was in like this the start of his part time uh, contract. But. Uh, Kurt Angle was just one of the greatest wrestlers that ever lived, so can't get rid of him. Boo, Callum, boo. As much as it kind of pains me to say, I think I'd erase Kurt Angle. So, Wego, for the first time, we're kind of agreeing about a Brock Lesnar thing. <laughs> no, oh, okay, okay, so I want Kurt Angle. I want Brock to erase then, if you agree. <laughs> in, in all seriousness, I actually would erase Kurt Angle. Um, Kurt Angle, as much as I, he is far more my favorite wrestler throughout mm -hmm. history between the two, uh, if I'm looking at this objectively as far as what they've brought to the table, um, Kurt Angle was a great talent, but he was one of just many other names in a big cast. Uh, Brock Lesnar saved that company in the early 2000s because there was nothing else really going on during that period. Um, then he went on to save MMA, and then he came back and had the first interesting match in WWE in like three years. So, like, I, I don't know. He's, he's done a lot. That's I, kind of the same philosophy that I've got where, like, Kurt Angle essentially disappeared for a bunch of years to me since I didn't watch TNA. Oh, yeah, he was in TNA, too. <laughs> Fuck Kurt Angle. And, <laughs> like, if you look at it, like, kind of uh, the shared space type of thing, it's like we had Austin, we had, you know, Jericho and Triple H and all the other people that were in that top kind of range. And it's sort of the same era as, like, what, like, a CM Punk is where... Punk was really big in WWE, but Punk wasn't the guy, and at no point was Kurt Angle the guy. And Brock Lesnar was at least being groomed to be the guy. And During that period, Lesnar was the guy. Kurt was just the guy holding him up. And it's like he had fantastic matches and everything like that, but I kind of think like Lesnar in the long run did more just by being like a spectacle. So it's it's a tough one. I mean, that's kind of the whole point of it. If it was like Brock Lesnar versus uh, Mojo Rawley, it's like, okay, well, clearly everybody's going to erase Brock Lesnar. But uh, <laughs> like that's kind of the name of the game. But uh, let's go with another one here. This one's the different eras. So maybe there's a little bit of a back and forth. AJ Styles or Rob Van Dam? <laughs> oh, he's getting fucking erased. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, CRVD. <laughs> yeah. As far, as far I was thinking that maybe AJ, Waco would try to argue it. I don't know. I like RVD, but here's the thing. AJ, as far as I'm concerned, is the greatest in-ring performer of all time and equal footing to Shawn Michaels. I know not everyone's going to agree with that, but it is what it is. RVD, 
kick trash cans in people's faces. Other than that, he's not exactly an obey. <laughs> and, and you want to talk about somebody who was never the guy? Yeah. RVD had like one shot at possibly being the guy, and then he got pulled over smoking weed and doing coke. It's weird to so, say like, he wasn't even the guy in ECW. Well, no, he was. He, he was kind of the guy. I mean, he, he held the television championship for however long. Ooh, he, the television year. championship. <laughs> to be fair, they yeah, but that was, that was the point where every single world champion they had was going to WWE or WCW. He was the one constant. And he was mainly pushed as their main event star, even though you had the world championship on people like Terry Funk or something like that. I will say I always... this. RVD from 2001 until about 2007 was a lot of fun to watch for me. So um, not a bad guy, but no AJ Styles. See, I always thought that Tommy Dreamer was the guy in ECW. Tom, I always thought Tommy Dreamer was more so than Rob Van Dam. I, I would even put like a uh, a Sandman above Rob Van Dam. Like, I think history in retrospect has made RVD seem like he was a bigger star on ECW, but he was, he was the same thing as, like I said, with Kurt Angle, just another cast player. Mm -hmm. Well, when, when you look at it this way, it's like, all right, so RVD and Tommy Drummer have both come to WWE. Let's look what they're doing. RVD has been given an IC title push, a tag team title push, eventually a world title push. Tommy Dreamer is eating Undertaker's tobacco spit. That happened? Yep. Yeah. So that's why uh, the two are looked at drastically different. One was made into a comedy character, and the other one was treated with, like, some dignity. Hmm. I'm glad I wasn't watching around that time frame. <laughs> uh, this one, uh, there could be some arguments for this one. Rey Mysterio or Daniel Bryan? Mm. I think That's... I'd erase Daniel Bryan. And I've never been the biggest Rey Mysterio, Mark. I, I'll tell you the thing that saves Rey Mysterio for me has nothing to do with his time in WWE, but it was those cruiserweight matches in WCW because mm -hmm. that was some of the hottest shit you were watching on TV at that point. Yeah, he was and awesome back then. He was like, so kick ass. Yeah, Daniel Bryan. I, I like Daniel Bryan a lot, but he never he captured an audience that wasn't being captured in many years, which is I think quite a feat. I mean, the the whole yes movement was really a thing even looking back on now it's like it's kind of amazing that you got the crowd that fired up behind something but it could have been anybody else honestly well i think that what hurts him is it petered out with his injury if he would have been able to capitalize that and still doing it now like those couple of years that he's been out i think that that would have ended up building much more of a legacy because right now you look back and it was like man he was like he got this huge push and like it eventually, like, it finally happened. And how long afterward did he get taken out with that first injury? Like, and, and I think like, Rey Mysterio's another one. Of, oh, I didn't know you were done. But yeah, how, like, what was it, like, three months or something like that, I think? Maybe even less than that? How long he was out with injury? No, like, after he won the title. Oh, after he won the title. It wasn't even that long. He didn't even make one pay-per-view defense, did he? He made one against Kane. He made one against Only Kane. Only one against okay. Kane. Yeah, so you it's don't like... You remember that? He threw a fucking fire extinguisher. He must have loved it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's where that joke origin <laughs> It might have been. Yeah, that's the one where Kane had a show. <laughs> uh, that was Kane had a show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Daniel Bryan had one match, and it gave us a ton of jokes. That's great. Oh. <laughs> Loose <laughs> Chappelle Loose... show? <laughs> Loose Traveler wanted to get in on this. Came, came <laughs> through a fire extinguisher. <laughs> um, I think um, retrospect is another one of those things that's kind of tarnished the the look on Rey Mysterio. The way it helped Rob Van Dam, I think it's hurt Rey Mysterio because when was the last time we saw Rey Mysterio in WWE? 2014, uh, I think. Move. Do, you, do you remember the specific incident it was? Because Royal was Rumble? Uh, the uh, Royal Rumble when Royal he came Rumble, in yeah. 30. W with the Daniel Bryan thing, hence why it's a good pairing to put these two together, I guess. Um, Probably so to Rick. Oh, go on. That that's that's a that's a bad ending for Rey Mysterio. But he even had many good years in WWE that a lot of people loved him. Like um, who was it? Uh, that one cat who used to do podcasts with us, uh, that Jester kid. You know what I'm talking about? Um, <laughs> he used to love Rey Mysterio. I remember because that's what he grew up on. That was his guy. He loved him. See, I always thought that Mysterio was overrated in his WWE run, and that hurts him a lot. And you put him against a lot of different people. It would be a very easy pick for me to just erase him, but you put him against Daniel Bryan. I mean, Bryan was like, uh, he burned really hot really quickly. Rey Mysterio, he had a long career. 
And he was popular as hell. Like, you can't deny that dude sold merch like crazy. And he used he to headbutt kids to the ring Lucha all the time. The like, like that? anytime you go, he brought Lucha masks to the mainstream. I mean, anytime you see any, like, Lucha mask made for something, like, um, I forget what it was. Someone had a Lucha mask, but it was for, like, their local sports team. And it was a Rey Mysterio style mm-hmm. mask. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I can't deny Mysterio's impact, especially due to the um, selling masks and other kinds of merch. Um, but I didn't watch a lot of his work in WCW firsthand. I've gone back and retrospectively watched it, and it's definitely a lot better than most of his WWE matches. But because I'm mostly familiar with his work in WWE, and the time where he was pushed the hardest was only due to the fact that Eddie Guerrero died. Mm-hmm. That does tarnish it a little bit to me to me that he was never going to be the guy or a main eventer unless that happened whereas Daniel Bryan organically got himself to a point where they couldn't even if they were trying to stop him from being the top guy he had he forced his way into being top guy so I think that's an important like I guess message to send to wrestlers that think that they're never going to get their opportunity so I'd keep Daniel Bryan yeah remember guys if you're not getting over just pray that the internet likes you (laughs) I mean, in the same way that Mysterio's match in WCW kind of hold him in high regard to some people that were watching earlier than I was, uh, Daniel Bryan's Ring of Honor matches are something that keep me coming back to watching his stuff because there was a time where he was the best wrestler in the world, at least in my opinion. <laughs> that was a nickname. <laughs> I've got a... I'd have to go um, probably a race Rey Mysterio just because of... Here's the thing, I fucking hate Lucha Libre. I think it's garbage. Um, so I didn't like a lot of this shit. Um, he that's only got over... Bullshit. Yeah, he only got over in WWE because of fucking Eddie Duck. Actually, that's not right. He did get over on his own. Um, he only got the world title because of uh, Eddie Guerrero's death. Yeah. yeah, so that's my main issue. Daniel got over... Listen, uh, listen, despite... don't forget about that 10-minute WWE title run he had. <laughs> Hey man, those uh, matches on SmackDown with a great call, they were great. Who no, no, you don't, you don't remember he was Swagger, WWE right? champion. He beat yeah, he... someone in a tournament and he was champion for like 10 minutes and then oh, Johnson shit. came out and got yeah, the title. I forgot about that during the yeah. uh, Punk feud. Yeah. He beat, he beat the Miz. Rey Mysterio lost, weaseled him way, himself into that whole thing. Yeah. That was actually kind of bullshit on uh, Cena's part. Yo, something right, I'm going to kick your ass. And I think <laughs> he couldn't. Um, but yeah, Daniel Bryan got over despite. So the company working against him, and I mean, some people like to say that it was all a work from the get go. I don't know how much of it was, but I doubt um, it. And honestly, I watched a lot of Daniel Bryan's older stuff in Ring of Honor. Some of it's overrated. Some of it with uh, Samoa Joe's really good. Um, I just think he's an overall better wrestler. So yeah, had to race Ray. So we had what? Uh, I was going to race Bryan. You're going to race Ray. Peyton, what was yours? Yeah, I'd, I'd erase Brian as well. And Callum, what was yours? Erase Ray. Hmm. 5050. Remember, everybody, leave your comments below. Tell us uh, what you think. I'll give you guys another porn star or superstar guess. Sammy Lane. <laughs> oh. she, I hope she's a porn star that fucks to Sammy Zane's music. <laughs> <laughs> thrust, 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 thrust. <laughs> fuck, 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 fuck. <laughs> Yeah, I'm definitely going with porn star now. Yeah, I'm going with porn star, just being hopeful. Yeah, porn. Wrestler. No! Uh, no, really. S A M M I L A N E. Sammy Lane. Nikki Tabo is her name. How about Blue Nikita? Uh, porn star? The last one that was blue was a porn star, so I'm going for a two for porn star. <laughs> a blue for? I'll just go wrestler. I'll go wrestler. <laughs> that is another wrestler. Damn. So let's pivot to wed, bed, or dead. That's essentially marry, fuck, kill. I just like calling it wed, bed, or dead because it rhymes. And that's what I ended up doing on Fanboys. So I still had the logo already made up. So yeah, <laughs> you pick. Uh, you got to marry one, fuck one, kill one. PCB. <laughs> you got Paige, Charlotte Flair, and Becky Lynch. Oh, that's an easy one. Marry Becky because she's a sweetheart. Uh, fuck Paige because she's a freak. And kill Charlotte because she's Charlotte. I'm uh, going to yeah. 100% agree with you. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, marry Charlotte because she's going to make the most money out of all of them. Oh. 
Uh, fuck Becky Lynch because I find her the most attractive, and kill Paige because she's Paige. Hang on, let me uh, throw a wrench into that. With her father's history with uh, marriages, you don't <laughs> think she's getting a you don't well, that... think she's getting a prenuptial <laughs> agreement? Dude, you know no, she I'm, get, I'm, getting, I'm getting the pre I'm getting the prenup. Let's put it that way. I'm, she's making she's gonna make more money than I am. I'm gonna get more out of that arrangement than she is. I think we did this one the last time, uh, but I. You know, it's a different group of people, so why not? The three faces of Foley. Uh, I think I suggest. I think I, this is what inspired doing this is that I suggested that. <laughs> I think it did. I think that's because it's listed as the first one on the thing. <laughs> so yeah, uh, Mary fuck kill mankind, dude, love, and cactus uh, jack. It, it's come back to haunt me. <laughs> yup. All right, so I'd have to. Oh, this is a hard one. I'm like, it's like, <laughs> who's going to maim me more in the bedroom? Cactus Jack or Mankind? Well, <laughs> so you're, what, are you automatically marrying Dude Love? Yeah, he's the safest one. If I've got to live with one of the fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you would get annoying, though. I can deal with annoying. I mean, we did the podcast with Drew. Yeah, that's true. Drew Love. <laughs> true his name is true love <laughs> plus i think i can coax him to like fucking jump off the roof and then pull the mattress last second <laughs> <laughs> so get that sweet lords of london uh <laughs> <laughs> so now that i've established that i will marry and kill dude love with a uh mattress incident i guess i'll <laughs> i guess i'll <laughs> I'll guess I'll fuck Cactus Jack because I imagine Mankind might do that horrible shrieking in the bedroom. Yeah, but the Cactus Jack's gonna bring fucking barbed wire bat. That's what I was gonna say. Can you imagine yeah. the sex toys wrapped in barbed wire Cactus Jack would try to introduce? He's like, I'm only gonna fuck you on a bed of nails. Alright, it depends. Is Mankind gonna pull my hair or just his own? I guess his, uh, if anything, he'd probably want you to pull his, right? Oh yeah, yeah you're good he, point. He probably would want to choke you, though. Mm. Also, you, <laughs> the mandible claw. Also, if you fuck, if you fuck, if you fuck mankind, then you can basically say that you're having a threesome because they're stocko as well. <laughs> I mean, if you fuck Cactus Jack, maybe you'll bleed out so you forget about it. <laughs> the justifications behind this. I love how the uh, PCB one was just like, oh yeah, yeah, we're gonna do this one. And this one's like, I don't know, I gotta really think about this. <laughs> I gotta think about whether or not I want to yeah, bleed out in the middle of you it. You convinced me mankind would probably be the safer lover, so I guess I'd kill Cactus Jack. That's yeah, where Cactus I'm Jack. gonna go. He even his shirt said "Wanted Dead." So like, <laughs> <laughs> would anybody not do the kill Cactus Jack, fuck mankind, marry dude love? Uh, I'd switch mankind and dude love. Fuck dude love. Get a little bit of loving from dude love. Yep, and uh, mankind. I thought was the funniest character out of three of them. So then again, yeah, mankind does get milder in the later on in his career. Yeah. He does have a softer side. Yeah, I'm guessing it's later mankind as opposed to like stuff ninety six mankind. So oh, even ninety six mankind, you just play the music and I'll calm down. <laughs> <laughs> so so get this. This is like such a an, a supreme example of how cleaned up WWE has gotten over the years. You remember Cactus Jack's old shirt, right? It was like the old wanted poster and it said yep. wanted dead. WWE made a retro version of it recently to sell in their shop, and it actually says "Wanted Dead or Alive" now. Oh, he's uh, <laughs> he's worked his way through the system, you know, like good behavior. Yeah, okay. It's kind of like when you have like eight life sentences, and they're like, "Oh, well, you've been doing a good job. We're going to shorten it to five. You're still going to die in prison, but it's like, yeah, it's just you know, a little pat on the back. Thanks for cleaning the trays at." the lunch cafeteria. You know Excellent, I mean? let that guy bleed out while you fucked him. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I had a little bit of a moment of dude love in me, that's why. <laughs> Such a ridiculous um, conversation. It yeah. really is. Uh, and I'm gonna toss another one out here. The original three beautiful people. Angelina Love, Velvet Sky, and Madison Rain. I barely remember any of these girls. Yeah, neither do I. I was gonna say fuck, fuck, and fuck. Um... Uh, Madison I think Rain. Madison Rain was the cute one, if I remember. I would go like... marry Madison Rain. Uh, fuck Velvet Sky, kill Angelina Love. Hang on, Madison Rain isn't she with Josh Matthews? I wouldn't yeah, want to be she... someone. I wouldn't want to be someone that has that logic. Yeah, I don't want like Josh Matthews sloppy seconds. Yeah, Velvet, Velvet Sky though is with Bully Ray. 
Jesus. Uh, oh, um. <laughs> it comes a little bit more think... interested now. Yeah, no, Angelina Love was with with uh, Baby Richards for a little while. That's not too bad. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know too been... much about him, but but she's that's the one I find the least. That means attractive. she has low standards. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'd still I stick with mine. Minded, yeah. I like how none of us minded Davy Richards getting some, but the other two, it's like, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Davey, you know, Davy Richards needs to get him some, and good for him. Daps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Angela uh, Love's got all these, like, tattoos and shit, though, and then, then I'm not really sure I'm down with that. Yep, that's why she gets the kill from me. All right, Angelina Love, you're dead. And I think that Velvet Sky and Madison Rain are... Really good looking, but uh, Madison Rain I find a little bit cuter, and Velvet Sky seemed that like between the two that she might be like the the weirder because she is with Bubba Ray out of all people and stuff. So <laughs> give her the fuck and give uh, Madison Rain the the marry. Hang on, if Velvet Sky's with Bully Ray, if she can tolerate him, she could probably tolerate me. Yeah, I'd marry her. <laughs> oh, like Angelina Love got matching tattoos with her husband. Ex-husband now. Well, that sucks then. Oh, they're not together <laughs> anymore. Yes. Oh, God, that's an ugly ass recently. tattoo. <laughs> At least with Velvet Sky, you know she likes wood. <sighs> <sighs> you think that that comes into play? The whole get the tables. <laughs> I hope Devon isn't involved. <laughs> <laughs> He's just hanging out in the closet. <laughs> Devon, yeah, buddy. <laughs> All right. so where, you, where, where are you guys going? I thought we were done with this. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, nobody really made a whole lot of picks except for me. <laughs> I'm going the same as you. I think we all just kind of like agreed. Like, yeah, that, that's oh. good. Because we, oh, okay. we don't really know who these girls are. So. <laughs> we're just going right, uh... fun about their fucking uh, life decisions. <laughs> <laughs> Every, everybody weigh in at the same time. Blind tag. Best entrance theme. Rusev Day. Evolution. Nakamura. When I had written down my original responses to these, I had done like a random generator kind of a thing like that. I ended up going Bret Hart. For some reason, I it's love so Bret okay. Hart's Everyone can be wrong once. <laughs> I'll, get, I'll get the entrance scene 4 out of 10. <laughs> you see that his most recent thing that he uh, is suing because he had some kind of a surgery and he has like no... Uh, movement in one of his fingers or something like that anymore. Jesus Christ. Somebody, I can't remember who it was, just left a comment on something and they were like, yeah, I'm going to give that surgery a 4 out of 10. <laughs> He's never going to le- uh, let this 4 out of 10 thing down. Ever. Well, it's his own fault. He shouldn't be a miserable fuck all the time. <laughs> to be fair, though, his life is pretty goddamn miserable. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, wonder <laughs> about how much of it he brings on himself, though. That's fair. Mm. At a certain point, I would, I would agree. I mean, like, I don't... <laughs> The guy's had a shitty life, though. I do like, feel for him. It's like, hey, Brett, we just wanted to talk uh, to you about um, this, what's going on recently. Oh, okay. Um, here's an insult about some random public figure I've not seen in 15 years. <laughs> 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 it's like, ah, thanks, Brett. That won't be a headline. So, Brett, you got a lot of uh, projects that you've been working on recently? Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm keeping busy, but uh, Seth Rollins really pisses me off. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> Uh, okay, Brett, we weren't really talking about that, but that that's great, I guess. <laughs> yeah, besides the entrance team, he hasn't really got a lot of upside, has he? Has he got the fucking Asshole of the Year award or whatever it is this shit yet? Uh, I think he did last year. Really sure. guy award? Yeah, oh, that guy award. He might have been I don't think he deserves years. that. He might have been nominated there's, a couple of times. I don't there's so won. many people ahead of him in that. Yeah. I gotta look that up. I don't remember who got last year's. Actually, last year's might have been Jeff Jarrett. Yeah, that no, sounds right. Was it? I thought it was either Kevin Dunn or if it was... Lenny Puffo was the first one, right? Lenny Puffo was the first one. The <laughs> inaugural inductee. <laughs> Alright, so the inaugural inductee for that was Lanny Puffo. That was in 2016. And last year's uh, Fuck That Guy award went to Kevin Dunn. All right, that makes that's sense. Yeah. That's, that's right. good too. We we gotta figure out uh, deserved third one this year. <laughs> just oh, looking at the the, I had to bring up the list of the awards, and it's just it's so fucking stupid. Well, I don't, 
I don't know. Class of 2015, Big Show's Gone, Dr. Hanukkah Burger, Bob <laughs> Kur Holly, Thurman Sparky Plugs, However Counterbell, Time Cow. Class of 2016, Rusev is a Potato, <laughs> The Spirit of Eddie Guerrero, Impression Wing, Drew White, Mr. Cotter Voice, Tag Team, The Boat Fleet Stable, <laughs> Ricky the Steamboat, and Tugger the Tugboat Boat, and Kane's Got a Shot. Class of 2017, Big East Package. I, I love that I sold a t-shirt of that the other day. Somebody bought like an XL or something like that. And that I'm glad it was um, XL. Fuck that guy goes to Kevin Dunn. <laughs> the impression ring is the wing is the right, right, right. Fuck you know. The tag team is not Jeff and JD. The gender Mahal face turn. Neville level 77 sold a t-shirt of that the other day too. That, that was pretty funny. The so fan sure appreciation wing. Awesome. Yeah. Somebody bought that uh, like three or four days ago or so. So it was like, it's not even when it's been like really hot on like something that we keep saying. Neville's not even on the fucking show anymore. <laughs> and then the headliner last year of David Otunga has dead family for a living. <laughs> That'd be great if fucking Neville just pops up like he comes back on WWE television and he's wearing that shirt. <laughs> like, <laughs> people are like, what's the 77 for? And he's just kind of like, ah, you know, that's my new gimmick. <laughs> just going to come out there and say, King of the Cruiserweights, 77. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and say, I don't know if there's any better candidate for this year than Jeff Jarrett. The gold I mean, bars really cemented himself. The, the gold bars somehow weaseling his way back into impact rebranding the company <laughs> and then fucking it all up with his alcoholism and then leaving all the belt <laughs> with stickers <laughs> well the only two other people i had a list of the potentials for next year for that and the only three that we had written down ahead of time were bret hart jeff jarrett and dixie carter so we got to put I some would, stars next to Dixie Jeff Jarrett. Dixie's done nothing here. Like D Dixie's done nothing this year. Dixie, like honestly, is like forgotten. She's done nothing. Oh, this is a lifetime achievement kind of I thing. I would have, yeah. If I was yeah, adding anybody, this... Hold on. I was gonna say if I had anyone this year, I'd probably put Sexy Star on that list. Oh, oh yeah, that's a good one. Oh, all right, um, might have added her down. There's only one other person I'd consider, and honestly, I don't think he deserves it that much, and that's Leo Rush. What he pissed no, me off? Is, that's... What was he? <laughs> really? pissed... He, he pissed me off because he no Wait, sold fuck. He no sold a power bomb off a ladder. Fuck that guy. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's not the Emma thing. It's the no selling. No, I don't give a shit that he got pissed off Emma. <laughs> yeah, that was actually kind of funny. Oh, I thought it was fucking great. Just, <laughs> like I don't know why people were flipping out backstage about that. It's all like, oh, you you're gonna lose your job for that. It was like, dude, that's fucking funny. Like, that's I would have commended him backstage and been like, yeah, that's a pretty good tweet right there. <laughs> No, you know what else I could throw in there is maybe Del Rio for the whole shit that went on with him leaving the company and fucking up Paige. And... Hang on, Paige is just as responsible for that, though. Well, you know what? Maybe we can have uh, the first ever Ooh, tag place. team uh, fuck that. <laughs> fuck those <laughs> people. <laughs> fuck, that, <laughs> fuck, that, fuck that ex couple. Yeah. <laughs> fuck that guy and girl. That's. Well, uh... say that we don't appreciate women enough. <laughs> <laughs> It's like we're gonna have our first inductee, and it's gonna be yeah, fuck Paige. I mean, we yeah. earlier did just say we we gave her the fuck in the uh, married fuck kill. So. Oh, we might as well fuck Paige if everyone else has. <laughs> uh, speaking of that, let's go porn star or superstar. <laughs> <laughs> Tiffany D. Gore. Repeat. Tiffany D. Gore. D. Gore. D. Gore. D. Dot G. O. R. E. That sounds like a wrestler. Yeah, I'm going to go with wrestlers because it's fucking weird and stupid. Sounds like Rhino's valet. Porn so. star. Okay. Change, change your name. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Let's go back around to Smark's choice. Hmm. Kane or Big Show? This is the one where you have to erase somebody? Yeah. Uh, you got to decide which one you want to fuck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that's, that's actually an easy one. Big show. See ya. You would erase uh, Big Show. Or, or yeah. you're not, you're saying that. Uh, no, you erase, fuck big, erase show. big Show. Keep Kane. <laughs> that's what we say. You say you Kane had. Because <laughs> it was. This is the one about the fucking one. And I was like, oh, it was easy, Big Show. <laughs> like, wait a minute. What? <laughs> now, Kane is one of the. Honestly, one of the best secondary characters, I think, in all of wrestling. Uh, had one of the best debuts of all time. 
uh, that build up to that, and then him just coming out, ripping the the door off the cage. Oh, that was so fucking awesome. Um, and he's had a very lengthy career. He's helped get over a lot of people throughout the years. He's had a lot of fun tag teams. I mean, Big Show's been okay, but I, I honestly don't know if he was just like completely erased from history, if it would even be noticed. That's what I was about to say. Like, if you erase Big Show, there's not that many consequences from him leaving. Yeah, I think the only thing I would miss is uh, Captain Insano from The Waterboy. <laughs> oh, you know what I'd miss? I'd miss that feud with Big Boss Man where he goes, oh, "You're yeah. a big nasty, you're a big nasty, but you're a big nasty bastard, and your mama said so." It's one of my favorite fucking feuds. I think I'd probably erase Big Show too. I hate to say because I think that Big Show doesn't get as much credit as he deserves sometimes, but I mean it's got to be Kane. Yeah, there's there's no hate on Big Show in this. It, I I feel bad actually when I say that that if I get rid of Big Show, I can't really think there's anything like I'm gonna miss about it. But I really do think that's the case. It was kind of surprising when you said that, and I thought about it myself. I'm just like, he really, he's he's always been around, and I do value him, and I can even remember some really cool matches, but. Really, not that consequential. Mm. Yeah, he's definitely a... would keep Kane. Go ahead. I was uh, keep Kane around. I think, if, if nothing else, he really revitalised the Undertaker's career at a time where Undertaker was actually getting quite stagnant. Because Undertaker had lost Paul Bearer at that point. He'd been out of the Mankind feud. It was something that actually he needed to, like, get his career back on track almost. And it, I mean, you take Isaac Yankum and you you compare it to Kane, and it's like the Kane character completely saved him. Of course, uh, we had a great little run there with uh, Team Hell No. That was a lot of fun. It's just one of those things where it's like I don't think anything Big Show's done can equate to how amazing it felt when Kane first debuted. Like being a kid it, watching it, that, it was just like, oh my god! Like you know. It, and Big Show had a really cool debut in WWE. His yeah. WWE debut was dumb, but his WWE debut was actually really awesome too. And also it involved a cage match, but not quite as cool as Kane's, unfortunately. One yeah. of my favorite pay per view names, just as a one off name, St. Valentine's Day Massacre. That was. Yeah, really that's cool. cool. Hmm. Let's go with. Uh... Nah, that one's going to be too easy. I'll save that for another time. Um. This is one we did the last time around, but I want to get your opinions about this. Ric Flair or Stone Cold Steve Austin? Oh, you fucker. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I almost feel like this is like the, the dumb, easy argument to take on this, but very simply, if there is no Ric Flair, there is no Steve Austin. Yeah, I was kind of leaning that way myself. Um, shit, I think Flair's probably had a bigger impact on the history of professional wrestling than Stone Cold has. And as much as, as great as Austin was and as big as Austin was, I don't really remember his run being that long on top. It, it, it really was like four years. Yeah. So, yeah, I guess I'd have to put Flair just because of body of work and ability to stay on top longer. If you got rid of him, more of history would be erased. I mean, Stone Cold himself has said, Ric Flair is his single biggest influence for becoming a wrestler. So yeah. when I when I say if there's no Ric Flair, there's no Stone Cold, it's not just like, well, you know, Ric Flair made the best. It's like, literally, if there's no Ric Flair, there probably wouldn't be a Stone Cold. And Same thing for just, Shawn Michaels. Yeah, no Plenty Shawn Michaels. People. Probably no, like, Chris Jericho. Probably no lo- loads H. of wrestlers. Yeah, loads of wrestlers owe their careers to, like, the influence that Ric Flair had on them. I mean, just to talk about Flair, like, just in general, as far as runs on top go, God Damn, that was a fucking long time. I mean, The Rock didn't last that long. Um, I guess Hogan was on top for a while. Austin didn't last that long. Hogan Cena's is the only one that comes close, and Cena maybe, but like, even them can't compare to Flair. No, definitely not in like drawing ability or the like the actual influence on the wrestling business. Cena's been at a time where wrestling has been on a, just a, a constant decline, pretty much. So I guess to be fair to Flair, we've got to get rid of Austin. Mm-hmm. It's kind of a tough thing like that, but sometimes uh, that's the name of the game. Uh, blind tag here. I'm going to go with uh, Callum on this one. First name you think of. Biggest piece of shit in wrestling history. <laughs> I don't know why Larry Zabisco came into my head for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a bad one. I think I remember because there was there was something uh, there was this guy in WCW that 
uh, died. Uh, Louis Piccoli, I think his name was. I think he died of a, a drug overdose. And um, they didn't mention it for the entire episode of uh, WCW. He, he was feuding with Larry Zabisco at the time. So he went into a um, he went to do a promo on the uh, to just talk about something else. And then he just uh, decided to bring him up at one point and say, well, I won't I won't say anything out of respect to the dead, but you, you know, what I think of you type thing. And it's like, why are you kind of heel promo on someone that legitimately died? Such an arsehole. I've got one that tops that. Benoit. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Benoit's pretty bad. When yeah. I wrote up my list, uh, the first that popped in my mind was Vince Russo. The only two I could... They, there's only one that might top Benoit, and I'm not sure, just because of circumstances, um, Jimmy Snuka. <laughs> I thought you were going to say Kevin Sullivan. <laughs> <laughs> Those are all good candidates. And I would also, again, throw Jeff Jarrett into the, the story. <laughs> I mean, he, things he's done over the years, like the fucking over his own father. Like, he, he's a real scumbag. The, the someone I would want to put, most people probably, well, most people here probably wouldn't agree with. I'd put Shawn Michaels up there as well. Nah, he was just a dick. Ooh. Once upon a but, time. He, he never had time. Like, yeah, but he, even he didn't do anything that, like, was major consequences other than maybe kept somebody from getting a push. Yeah, for the most part, he <laughs> like basically... Said, kept somebody from getting a push. Yeah, for the most part, he just did drugs as an asshole and occasionally would get beaten up when it got caught up to him. <laughs> yeah. True. yeah, he didn't, like, go out physically harming or intimidating people. Like, he he was just an asshole who kept with his own little circle of friends and, like, oh, you can't sit at the cool kids bus. <laughs> 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 Can't send it to cool kids, boss. I'm gonna keep you from getting bored. <laughs> <laughs> All so sorts of voices that's today. Shit, that's the shit you hear about him, right? Like it's, yeah. it's like the dumbest shit people get upset at for. <laughs> Actually, one of my favorite Shawn Michaels getting mad story was in 06 one, where apparently he flipped his shit because Umaga was wearing the same color tights as a uh, Triple H at tribute yeah. to the truth. <laughs> Yeah, it was like black and white's Triple H's colors or something yeah. like that. I'm just like, what the fuck? <laughs> Which, that's gotta be one of those fun situations where it's like Triple H is like sitting there, he's like eating a sandwich or something yeah. like that. And he's just gonna like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you gotta change, you gotta change. Doesn't that pit you, uh, piss you off, Hunter? Okay with it. <laughs> gonna... Try the sandwich, manga. <laughs> Where's Baron? I gotta show up this impression. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's how he did the impression he had the sandwich in his mouth. <laughs> uh let's see. Word association here. I'm gonna go with uh Wego on this one. First thing that pops in your mind when I say Sonny. Porn. Share. <laughs> Uh, days, sunny days. Sunny day. <laughs> <laughs> All right, every, everybody think about your answer for this one. Uh, and you could spit them all at the same time or something like that if you want. <laughs> First thing that pops to your mind when you hear the name of Biggie. Package. Package. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping that would be the case. <laughs> It's completely ruined him, doesn't it? Um, it doesn't help that you sold an extra large package and you told us about it. Yeah. <laughs> I just find it so weird when like somebody will order something like a sticker of that, and it's like somewhere somebody's just slapped a Big East package sticker somewhere. <laughs> like maybe on like a pole, like a street light or something like that. There's like a UPS, Big E kind of thing. Somebody will come across and be like, oh, I've never heard of that band before. <laughs> uh, let's see. Wed Better Dead. You got to pick. Uh, you're going to marry, fuck, or kill out of Team Extreme. Jeff Hardy, Matt Hardy, and Lita. Oh. Mm. Interesting. Because I've hated them. and I've hated all three of them at different points during their lives. <laughs> yeah. And, and now I'm just kind of at a, eh, all right, face. All right, well, hmm. I feel like Lita's really chilled a lot, and I think she's actually become kind of a cool chick, so I would probably marry her. I used to really not like Lita. I found her annoying as shit once upon a time. But I think at this point, she's she's pretty mellow, and I yeah, think she's had her heart you, times. 
She'd make you listen to all that shit music she does in that stupid band, the Lucha Gores or whatever it is. Whatever, dude. Yeah, how did her? Uh, how did her theme go? So fuck your rules, man. Yeah, whatever it was. Um, I I would bang broken Matt Hardy because that would, that would probably just be an incredible experience. And um, I, I'd kill Jeff, but he'd honestly probably take care of it himself. <laughs> <laughs> Let's give him a dirt bike. Uh, I'd uh, marry Matt Hardy. Because I think, from what I've seen, he seems to be quite a good father nowadays. Like, he obviously had his moments back in the late 2000s, early 2010s, but he seems to have calmed down and got a new lease on life. Uh, fuck Lita because she's the most attractive out of all three of them in my mind. And uh, kill Jeff Hardy because I've always hated that piece of shit. Damn, dude. <laughs> I, nev- I never saw what people saw in Jeff Hardy. I always thought Matt was the better of the two. Here's my biggest issue, and it's what do I do with Matt Hardy? And it's not because of his past, it's because who he's with. Rebby Sky is a fucking scary oh, woman. dear. I didn't even think about that. She will bring hell down upon you like no mm-hmm. other. Um, if I marry him, she's going to fucking show up at my house. Uh, you fuck him. If I fuck him, <laughs> she's going to show up at my house. If you kill him. If she's going to show up at my fucking house. <laughs> at least if I kill both of them, I can make it look like an accident, like in a car or something. So I guess I'll go with the kill option. Um, marry Lita and fuck Jeff Hardy. And I don't know, maybe if he's OD and it'll be a fun ride. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Is that too dark? Yeah, I love that. I love that's what you hope for. Oh, God, I hope he ODs in this one. <laughs> and it's fun. <laughs> like, I'm going to set up Matt Hardy for this uh, horrible. Like double suicide on, type on, of thing. In fairness, the Matt Hardy thing is a defense thing. Yeah, but it's like he he gets killed just because he's got this association with her, and it's like, That's oh, then fault. I'll make sure that that it's those kind of things. And it's like, but with Jeff Hardy, hopefully he'll die, but it'll be fun there for that one. <laughs> like, you don't, don't want the might as well have it. you don't want the Matt Hardy car crash to be a fun ride, <laughs> 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 like speeding down the road or something like that. I remind you, there's no good answer for this. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'd probably go... Uh, I think I'd probably marry Lita. Fuck Jeff Hardy, kill Matt Hardy. I don't know. That's kind of tough. Then, it's kind of flip a coin in a lot I mean, of ways. I mean, you wouldn't kill Matt Hardy, you'd delete him. That's true. So, you could always hit Control z and bring him back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I don't want to fuck him because he'll do that <laughs> uh, let's see superstar or porn star sexy Juliet I'm gonna go wrestler yeah wrestler <laughs> sounds like such a cheesy wrestler <laughs> I, don't, I think porn stars have more self respect but I don't know well, we are talking about people that name themselves Megan Cox and stuff. <laughs> yeah, but I don't think, I don't, a bit of like Megan Cox is key. clever. Yeah, I don't think any of them would be so. I don't, I don't know many of them that would actually put the word "sexy" in the title. That seems a bit like up themselves, really. Whereas wrestlers, uh, they do all the time. You know what? Let me see if I have any of them on that list that have that. Yep, sexy Cora. <laughs> well, which one is this one? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, sexy Cora and, uh. Sexy Juliet. One of them's a porn star and one of them's a wrestler. Yeah, one person. Well, Sexy Core is the fucking porn star and Sexy Juliet must be a wrestler. Yep, that's uh, Eva Lise from uh, Tough Enough and what's her face, uh, or what's her name on uh, Lucha Underground? Eva Lise. It is Eva Lise? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I thought she went by some other name. Eva Lise. <laughs> yeah, so she went by Sexy Juliet at one point. Kind of weird. Uh, let's go with another one. Let's go with Eden Black. Uh, either uh, it's a douchey Seth Rollins fan or porn star, so I'm not sure. I'm gonna go porn star. Well, that's kind of the <laughs> game, <laughs> yeah. I know, know it's I, this I know one or that one. <laughs> I, oh. I heard it. I heard it as it came out my... indie wrestler. <laughs> I heard it as it came out my mouth. Like, oh, God damn it. 
It's like, ah, oh, so I marry, fuck, kill. Either star. I marry, I fuck, or I kill. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, all, all the all the blue ones so far have been wrestlers, so the black one would be a porn star. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah, yeah the black one's gotta be a porn star. <laughs> <laughs> I got the porn star. So you got uh, two for porn star, and what's your guess, paid? Porn star. Wrestler. Mm. Sarah Ardley is her real name. I wish I had the real names for the porn stars. <laughs> I don't really know any of them. The only one I know is uh, August Ames' his real name. This cause news thing popped up uh, saying that she had killed herself yesterday or something like that. And it was just like Mercedes Grabowski or something like that killed herself. And I'm like, who the hell is this? And it was like, oh, a porn star. I don't know if you've read about that story. It's not for this podcast, but it's actually really fucked up. What is it? That she basically just got bullied into committing suicide by the LGBT community because she didn't want to fuck a gay guy. Oh, Jesus Christ. Mm. Right, not for this podcast. <laughs> yeah, that that seems like that situation sucks. <laughs> All right, well, Although it's kind of funny that. Go ahead. Wrestler or porn star? Ty Dillinger. This must be a trick question or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did he do like porn at some point? Ty Dillinger, before he got into wrestling, was a foot fetish model. Wow. <laughs> Oh, that's why he stayed in NXT so long. <laughs> How did they not give him like a big boot finisher or something like that? Okay, if I ever meet Vince, I'm gonna tell him this just so Ty gets stuck with that gimmick. <laughs> Is that why he called himself the perfect ten because of his toes? His ten toes. <laughs> <yes>. <laughs> Uh, when I was doing the research for this, like, yeah, I found a couple that are actually kind of all that and stuff. Like, Shelly Martinez, it's like, oh, of course, I'm not going to bring that up because that mm. one's obvious, you know. And we know, we've seen some interesting photos of Lana. Yeah, I mean, well, a lot of them have done, like, nude photo shoots, and I kind of don't think that that counts. Like, I don't right know, Lana, Lana's in some really stingy photos. I'm like, huh, what the fuck were you up to? Not as bad as Mickey James was. Yeah, even the photos they're posting of her now, like Russo's fo- posting photos of her, like pretty much naked in bed, and he's like, "This is what I'm waking up to." <laughs> I love the fact that he's posting that stuff where he says, "Like, it's like a picture of them at dinner," and he's like, "Oh, like uh, took my wife out to a great dinner. Can't show you dessert, wink, wink." <laughs> like... You should just post for dessert, Rusev Kudosh. <laughs> uh, let's see. I'll go with uh, one of the male names on that uh, that I had written down. Brent Albright. That sounds wrestler. like a wrestler. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he's a wrestler. Yeah. Okay, well, that kind of spoils it. Yeah, he's a wrestler. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was, um, they gave him this really stupid name when he came up to WWE. It's a Gunner Scott, I think his name was. And I think he appeared in like two segments with Chris Benoit, and then he was off TV. That sounds wow. even more like a porn star, Gunner Scott. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jeff, I'll come across that. I would have gone with that name. Uh, what about Sue Young? Wrestle. Porn. Mm, porn. Wrestler, and also the little girl in Rush Hour. <laughs> Not the same person, <laughs> but the name of the character. Uh, blind tag here. Best tag team ever. New Age Outlaws. Uh, Los Guerreros. Legion of Doom. I had written down ahead of time Legion of Doom with a quick flash of New Age Outlaws. Yeah, kind of Los Guerreros like didn't pop up in my mind at all. Yeah, it's because that's really weird. Los Guerreros, <laughs> really? I was I, I got into wrestling in 2002. They were the biggest tag team on SmackDown at that point. Like, I wouldn't even put them in the top 20. I thought they were really good. I'd well, maybe well, put well. them in the top 20, but definitely wouldn't be the, anywhere near the first thing I think. <laughs> but uh, it's cool. It's cool. Which, like, I mean, to be fair, I didn't like them. I liked Eddie, but Charlie Bo was just there. <laughs> yeah, it's generally everyone's opinion. <laughs> they worked really well together. They brought out the best in each other, I would say. It's like Eddie Guerrero was one of the best tag teams of all time. <laughs> yeah, Charlie Bo bored the crowd, and then people got excited, but Eddie finally got him. <laughs> a great hot tag. Exactly. So, we should end off on... Well, what do you guys think? Should we end off on a Smarks choice or a uh, Mary Fuck Kill? We'll do one of both. If you've got a really good extreme Mary Fuck Kill, then that, but... Yeah, if it's gonna go over, like, a wet fart, let's do that one first. 
yeah, one one of each, but do the one that you think will be like have the better high note to end on. I mean, and this is Tony, so he's going to mix them up and do it the other yeah. way around. Uh, maybe I don't know. If it does, then we'll just piggyback and do the other one again or something like that. We'll we'll make sure that we get to one where it ends up being good. Uh, Sorry, I was like. <laughs> Well, yeah, it might be. Who knows? Can we finish? Can we finish on a round on who's whose ass is this? <laughs> I'm a Johnson. <laughs> uh, let's go with Smart's choice then. Let's go with. Hmm. Ted DiBiase or Rowdy Roddy Piper? I assume you mean senior. Ted DiBiase. Yeah, of course, senior. I mean, yeah. <laughs> if it's junior, then it's it's not even a. D yeah. DBSC Junior would or senior rather would probably either one of them <laughs> would probably be the one I would get rid of. Um I've not never been the biggest Piper fan, but uh he was that foil to Hogan during that significant era. And I I've liked various phases of Piper. I I love that f- phase when he was the uh was he the president of WWE and he fought Goldust and that Hollywood backlot brawl and he's had some decent matches. Um DBSC, I I honestly couldn't tell you one match he's had. <laughs> I more just think of like some fun promos he's had, and well, like if they were gone, I probably wouldn't wouldn't be that upset. At least he got the bumper for your show right under the like such. <laughs> yeah, everybody's that's, that's got fair. a piss. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would get rid of DBOC mainly due to the fact that he gave us Virgil. <laughs> so, <laughs> there's got to be some sort of penalty for that. Doesn't that save him? <laughs> You need somebody to pop up at these uh, flea markets. Yeah, need someone to the hobos to look up to. Uh, DBS, he gave us Virgil, and Virgil gave us fuck money. So <laughs> we wouldn't have fuck money without Ted DiBiase. Man, I wish that there was some kind of uh, wed better dead that we could do with <laughs> Virgil and fuck money. So I think I actually would erase uh, Piper and keep DiBiase, because DiBiase, I think his character did more for... I mean, not just like piggyback characters and stuff, but him as like an entity in pro wrestling, I think expanded further than pro wrestling and Piper. He did movies and stuff and people know Piper and everything like that. But I think Piper was a bigger deal kind of for that sort of area. Um, DiBiase, he had his, like you said, like you could have some good matches when it comes to Piper and how many great matches can you think of with DiBiase and stuff like that. But I think DiBiase as like a manager and as a character means more in the long, uh, the long range. When it comes to Piper, I think of a lot of like classic stuff that was great, but there gets to a certain point where he fizzles out and I don't remember anything that he did. Once you get past like 92 or something like that, what else did Piper do? I don't remember anything he did in, like, WCW. I mean, I wasn't really... Hollywood backlap brawl, dude. Yeah, there's that. that. He won the tag titles with Ric Flair. Oh, Oh, yeah. Yeah, but they only gave him that because it was like, oh, he survived cancer. Here's a tag belt. No, he he did make a big comeback in WCW. I think it was in 97. He fought Hogan at, um, was it Starcade? Yeah, he fought him at Starcade, which was their big show of the year back then. So, I mean, he, he had a significant bump there. He wasn't that interesting. But... I don't know, man. Who did Ted DiBiase manage that you like remember being like a great pairing? Well, don't I mean, you dare, uh, don't you dare say Stone Cold. Uh, the only, that the only count. person I really like associate him too much with is Andre, and that pairing wasn't fantastic. I kind of look yep. at it as like Money Inc. kept that new uh, generation stuff going for a little bit. Like he feuded with the Undertaker. He had his whole. Uh, like, he was a part of the whole thing with uh, Razor Ramon, and, like, there's a lot of different things back around that time frame. And he's just, like, people, you know, pattern themselves off of him a lot. JBL mm-hmm. was essentially a Ted DiBiase ripoff in a lot of ways. Yeah, but oh. think about all the people that have got talk shows in WWE now. And Piper's Pit was the first oh, incarnation point. of that. And even people who say they get, like, that route like Roddy Piper style. I mean, like Dean Ambrose is often compared like, well, he's got that Roddy Piper promo style and attitude. And mm. that's around too. Like it, I, listen, I, I love them both, but I yeah, mean, you, you said it yourself. Like, look at the mass media appeal that Roddy Piper brought in too. I mean, with the whole rock and wrestling connection, he was one of the big players in that. Um, all the movies he did, dude, have you seen hell comes to frog town? <laughs> have you seen hell comes to frog town? Because if you've seen hell comes to frog town, I, I think this is a no brainer. 
No, I have not seen <laughs> Hell Comes to Frogtown, but I don't know, maybe a future smart announced table. <laughs> I actually have never seen They Live. So I can't even really equate too much to that, but yeah, there's there's a good argument for Piper. Yeah. Hmm. Wait, go, did you pick? Uh yeah, I got rid of Debiase. Huh. So <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah. All right, let's uh, potentially end off on a wed better dead here. Maybe two of them, um, just for the hell of it. The Brood. Gangrel, Edge, and Christian. All right, so I'm going to say kill Gangrel. Um, mm-hmm. He was a porn star, right? And he's probably done low-budget porn and riddling with STDs. So, uh, I think he just was me. a director. Oh, was he just a director? I, I heard he was so. a full porn star. I mean, might have been. I mean, maybe he fought, uh, had some kind of thing with Tiffany D. Gore. <laughs> I think we can all be in agreement. Kill Gangrel, right? Yeah, I'd probably yeah. kill Gangrel. Mm-hmm. I'd marry Edge because I know he's not faithful, so he'd break up with me and I could get all that alimony money. Yeah, uh, that's true. And I could put a blue dot on Christian's face. And talk <laughs> Damn it, I was going to make the blue dot joke. <laughs> <laughs> I thought the same fucking thing. <laughs> We're all just like, can't wait to make that blue dot joke. Yeah. <laughs> but nobody's brought up the live sex celebration with Edge. Well, you did. No joke was made. Well done. He wrote his wild oats when he was younger. It's it's He's a new man now. He cut his hair. <laughs> yeah, it looks like a fucking dork. <laughs> he looks like a doof. He looks like Beavis. <laughs> yeah, he does. That's a really good comparison. <laughs> <laughs> Man, now Christian needs to change and look more like Butthead. With a he blue does. dot. He's kind, of, he's kind of got the eyes. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, god damn it. I'm not gonna want to see it now. <laughs> Callum, what's your uh your pick? Uh kill Gangrel, marry Edge, fuck Christian. It'd be more pity than anything else, really. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, bring back the old phrase of yeah, I'd do him but wouldn't enjoy it <laughs> if I had to do him I'd make him sit through that fucking theme song he used to have Christian <laughs> I fucking hate that song but I loved it at the same time alright I think that that's gonna tap us out we got about uh, a little bit over an hour so um... yeah it's good enough why not <laughs> there's no like end game to this kind of thing so uh Actually, you know what? Let's do one more porn star or superstar. Let's go with Christy Mist. Mist what? <laughs> well, I mean, it could be a uh, drop kick or it could be a uh, money shot. <laughs> <laughs> she could have worked uh, with Alvin. So she's either an indie wrestler or. <laughs> <laughs> I think she might be a porn star. Those are the two given options. Yes, those are the two given options. <laughs> I'll go with a wrestler just to say the other thing. I I think this is a trick question. I think this is a double one. Let's, one see, let's see if this makes you change your mind. This is how she spells her name. K-R-I-S-T-I M-Y-S-T Totally a porn star. Porn star. Count uh, five, I guess. Porn star. Indie wrestler. <laughs> God damn it. Tina With Harlow is her name. <laughs> With a future in porn. <laughs> well, if there's anything that we've proven here, it's that they all can go both ways. <laughs> and especially the porn stars. <laughs> yeah. So tell us what you guys thought about this kind of stuff. Hopefully you joined in on the fun. You gave us our, your blind tags and stuff throughout and your Smarks Choice and your Wedbetter Deads and your guesses and stuff like that. Um, we will uh, do another one of these when we can't think of anything to do. I think it's a good thing to just kind of randomly do on different weeks. And this was a week where we didn't really have anything going on that we could really build around and stuff. So thumbs up as far as I'm concerned. Could have been another Baldur Barry instead. You never know. <laughs> or finisher versus finisher. Could have dragged away going to that. Um, 
Yeah, so let's go around starting doing some plugs for some different things we got going on here. Peyton, you're up first. Go at it. Well, it is December, and I am celebrating all month to get hyped for the new Star Wars movie coming out. It's Star Wars month over on my Mixer channel, uh, so I'll be playing Star Wars games every day that I can, uh, generally Monday through Thursday, 10 p.m. Eastern time. I uh, started off with Battlefront 2. No, not the one everyone's all pissed off about right now. <laughs> the, good the, the good Battlefront 2, yeah, from like the 2000s. Um, I'm probably going to be playing Lego Star Wars, Shadows of the Empire, uh, Rebel Assault. I got I got a whole list of Star Wars games I'll be playing throughout the month. So find me on there, Mixer.com slash Mr. Payton, or follow me on Twitter for all the updates, Twitter.com slash Mr. Payton. Way go. All right, you can follow me at Twitter on Twitter at Stephen Wago. Stephen is spelled with a PH. Wago is W A G O, and you can keep me updated on all that crap. Man, how did you get that uh, sweet Twitter uh, handle <laughs> at Twitter? Yeah, at Twitter. <laughs> you got to think that there's at least one company out there that's like pissed about that. <laughs> Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> Callum, uh, you can find me on Twitter at Wigmeister14. And just check out all the good articles on Smoke at Moment because there's plenty of them. For my side of things, obviously, everybody keep following all the Smart Out Moment stuff at Smart Out Moment on Facebook and Twitter. Obviously, SmartOutMoment.com itself, too. If you're listening to this on iTunes and Stitcher, that's your best way to follow suit with everything that we've got going on. But if you're on YouTube and you want to be aware of the next videos that come up, hit that subscribe button and ring that bell that you want to check off notifications and you'll be aware of the next videos, whatever they are. The next one, of course, is going to be the hot tags for next week for episode 315. And then if I remember correctly, I think it's uh, Clash of Champions predictions. And eventually we're going to start rolling into we got the mailbag coming up the week after that. And then very, very soon at the end of the year, we've got these uh, 2017 Smart Count Moment Awards. So we have to kind of figure out what we're going to be doing as far as that goes. Um, we will let you know about that as far as... Uh, when that's going to be posted, when we know. But for anybody that wants to participate and write up their list, go ahead on the website, on the sidebar, and on the homepage, a little slider, and on the homepage underneath the slider, there are the links to that. You can see every single category of every single award that we've got going on, some changes from last year. And on top of that, the Smack Talk section that you can vote on the poll for. I have to go back and I have to add... Uh, Superstar or porn star did the list for a little bit later on, but that is what you guys have to be looking forward to coming up soon. So thanks for listening to this, everybody. Can't wait to see you for the next time. This has been another smart out moment and we are being counted out. Ah!